Hi guys, I'm Nick Bester and welcome back to my channel. For those of you that don't know me, I'm a 220 marathoner and running coach and I've been running for just about 10 years now. Um, and when I think back to 10 years ago when I started running, my 5k time was 25 minutes and 14 seconds and I've managed to improve that to 14.34. So just over 10 and a half minutes improvement. And today I'm gonna to share with you my top five tips and how you can improve your 5k time. Okay, so tip number one is to add structure to your training. So what that means is that if you go for the same run every day at the same pace on the same route, you'll probably improve, but at such small incremental improvements. As soon as you start adding structure, as in making your fast days a lot harder and your easy days a lot easier, that's when you'll start to see a real difference in improvements. So I recommend probably two harder days in the week. A lot of runners out there tend to do it on a Tuesday and one of the weekend days. Um, at the moment, I'm doing two and a half harder days in a week and everything else is easy. And by easy, I mean, if you're following heart rate zone two, so zone two means you don't really go above 72% of what your maximum heart rate is. But at the end of the day, easy runs should just feel easy. You should be able to have a conversation with your friend the whole way through. The harder days, that's the business time, that's where the money's made, that's where those PBs are coming. So those you really wanna snap out of your comfort zone. It's really uncomfortable for all of us pushing our limits, but at the same time, the more we push our limits, the more we get used to that uncomfortable feeling and the more we get used to those faster, faster paces. The next thing is to plan your peak accordingly, okay? So let's say your 5K race is in four or six weeks time. What you wanna do is you wanna look for progressive incremental increases week on week as far as volume goes and as well as mileage goes, and then a little taper with a few days to go before the 5K race to really aim to peak at that race. I'm sure a lot of you must have heard about the 80-20 ratio. And what that means is that 80% of your training should be easier everyday maintenance mileage and 20% should be that higher end faster speed. So an example is if you're doing 50 Ks in the week, 10 kilometers will be at a higher intensity and 40 kilometers will be at an easy everyday zone two pace. And remember when it comes to those harder days, you really want at least one to two recovery days in between so that you can feel fresh for those harder sessions um, and be able to perform to the best of your ability. Okay, so tip number two is that you want to practice running at target race pace and even do sections within training at faster than target race pace. You also wanna set yourself realistic goals for your 5K. So there's certain sessions I do that give me a good indication of what sort of speed I should target for these 5Ks and what time and shape I'm in. The first of which is by doing a session that I love doing five times one kilometer repeats, recovery 75 seconds. Whatever you can do, you add up your time for all five of those one kilometer intervals and that'll give you a good indication of what you can do on race day. The mile equivalent to that session is you do three times one mile recovery 90 seconds in between and you add up those three times one miles your total time for that will give you the indication of what your 5k shape is apart from that a really really good session to do um, is a session that i often do is eight times 400 meters recovery 60 seconds followed by eight times 200 meters recovery 60 seconds and in this turn you should be going at slightly faster than 5k pace for your 400s and then even pick it up a little bit quicker for the 200 and that session is a great example of training at faster than 5k pace so you would have done eight times 400 meters at slightly faster than your 5k pace followed by eight times 200 meters at slightly faster than what you initially did the 400 meters at. That gives you a chunk of 4.8 kilometers of track volume at a faster pace than what your goal 5K pace is. It just gets the body used to what the pace feels like. So come race day, fresh legs, little bit of a taper, adrenaline, uh, race pace should really feel a lot more comfortable. Okay, so tip number three is probably a tip you wouldn't expect to hear, um, but something I'm a firm believer in. So I genuinely believe that you have to feel the part to run the part. So if you feel good within yourself, you feel good at that start line, you feel good within your kits, then you stand a much better chance of executing a good race. A good example is as soon as I put these shoes on over here, I know it's business time. There's time for fun and games in the week, 
But when these go on, it's business time, time to focus. Um, another really good example is my watch straps over here. So as you can see, uh, I've got watch straps here in the same colors as what my team colors are, blue and white. On that note, a quick shout out to Fit Straps. Thank you so much for these. I'll get a discount code on screen right now that'll give you 25% off. Feel the part to run the part. Let's go. We're living at a day and age where running shoes have constantly evolved, especially in the most recent years, and times have come down drastically to this. Um, so I'm not saying you need to go out there and buy the most expensive shoes out there, but there are carbon fiber shoes that certainly help in aiding some performance. Um, and if you haven't run in them before, I would def definitely recommend getting yourself a pair just to see the difference and how responsive they actually are. When it comes down to, you know, going for your PV and within a few seconds, those could certainly make a difference. Okay, on to tip number four. This comes down to pacing the race correctly and executing the best possible race that you can. So a lot of us go out too fast. I mean, I'm guilty of it myself. But if I look at my best possible performances that I've run to date, um, they've come with equal to negative splits. And I think a good way to work out where you're comfortable and what you're not comfortable at in a 5K distance is by doing five kilometer time trials en route to your actual main event. So you might just, you know, find a 5K time trial route yourself. You might incorporate this into a park run. I encourage this every few weeks. What this does is it just gets you a good understanding as to what you're comfortable at and what you're not comfortable at. Um, and then just know on race day with slightly fresher adre legs, adrenaline, nerves, you can always find a little bit extra. But the way I break down a 5K is as follows. Um, so I always go, you know, the first K is an active warm up. Um, you've got a lot of adrenaline, you've got a lot of buzz going, control that adrenaline and let it come out towards the end. Kilometer two and three, those set your tone for the 5K and the race to come. Um, you really got to focus and concentrate in those kilometers. Uh, often I find them quite tough because you're starting to hurt and you're not even halfway. Um, and then it comes to kilometer three to four. Uh, this is often the most slow kilometer in a 5K. You've really got to focus and I say give it all you've got in this section because kilometer four to five, you can always find something extra there. When you're 1K to go, you can hear the finish, you can smell the finish, you can find something extra. So that I find is the best way to break down a 5K. As far as pacing strategy goes, I would say head off at at least target 5K pace with the aim to pick up with the last kilometer. So what you're looking for is four solid, solid kilometers. And the last kilometer, you give it your absolute all. Hopefully that means you come in with a negative split and under that target time or PB. I've recently done a video on my 5K mindset and what goes through my mind when I'm racing a hard 5K. I think you might find it very, very useful. And I'll put the link to this video in the description below. Got this, mate, let's go. Okay, so tip number five and the most important tip. You hear it all the time, and yes, I'm gonna say it, consistency, consistency, consistency. So here's a few tips that help with consistency. I think as soon as you can establish a routine, it just makes this easier. So on a Monday, this, Tuesday, this, Wednesday, this, Thursday, this, and so on and so forth. The hardest part is getting into that routine. Once you're in that routine, you're just able to be consistent week in and week out, and those results really come through when you're consistent. Um, another way to be able to remain consistent is by meeting up with friends or with a group of runners. Um, often, if you're the only one running by yourself, it's a lot easier to put it off, but if you know you're meeting someone, someone's holding you accountable, you're much more likely to go for that run. Um, another good way is to leave your running kit out the night before. So put your shoes out, put your clothes out. As soon as you wake up, it's there, go for the run. It just makes the chances of you going for that run a whole lot higher. And you know what? I think in this day and age, uh, with Strava being such a big part of training, you know how it goes. If it's not on Strava, it doesn't count. Um, it's amazing because it allows us to see a lot of other runners training out there. And a big part of being consistent is remaining motivated throughout training. And I know motivational levels, they go like this. They're like a heartbeat. Some weeks you're super motivated. The next week you're just deflated and you just don't feel like getting out. But what I really find helps is by following people that inspire me um, on Strava and seeing the training that, that they do. And I think, wow, if they've gone out and they've done that, you know, then I can go out and do my session. So hopefully that helps. I'll put the link into my Strava below. Hopefully some of my sessions can help you and motivate you. Uh, but yes, consistency, 
means improvements, improvement means PBs, and we want those PBs. Okay guys, so just to remind you what those five tips were. The first one was structure, training to the correct structure, keeping those hard days hard and easier days easy. The second one was to practice race pace. Um, you want to do sections that are even faster than race pace, so come race day, that 5k PB pace feels more comfortable. The third of which is to feel the part, to run the part. Number four is to pace the race correctly and give yourself the best possible chance of executing a good race on race day. And number five is to remain consistent. I really hope these tips can help you. And what I would love from you to do is to drop a comment below, letting me know what your goal 5k time is. And then when you achieve it, please come back, let me know, comment on that. I draw massive motivation from that. Um, so yeah, give it a good go. Onwards and upwards, boom shakalaka, let's go. Hey, well done. Finishing in 14, 55. Woo!